and welcome back to CEO.ca's Inside the Boardroom. My name is James Hetham, and today I'm joined by Ken Armstrong, President, CEO, and Director of North Arrow Minerals. Ken, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, James. Thanks for having me. So let's get right into it. Looking forward to learning more about your new gold project in Botswana in the Kaipang Gold Project. Obviously, this is somewhat new territory for you, better known for diamond and lithium in Canada. Walk us through this deal. You know, how did it come about? Yeah, uh, it is a bit of a change in direction for us. With North Arrow, we've been focused in, in Canada, largely on diamonds and, and more recently on lithium. Um, you know, both, uh, both commodities are a little challenged in the market at the moment. Um, we have projects that we've done really good work on and we like, um, but, uh, but not getting much value for them. Um, this summer, Ira Thomas joined the company as the chair of the board of directors. And as part of that, we, we did a review of what opportunities might be out there for a company uh, like North Arrow with our experience. And um, we, we probably looked at about five or six different uh, opportunities. Some were specific projects, some were sort of conceptual. Um, but really, with uh, Ira's more recent experience in Botswana, the Crypan Belt and this opportunity with Rockman Resources was one that we were made aware of. Um, and we recognize it as, as uh, you know, really what it is, which is a, a, a it's a 1,400 square kilometer concession area covering uh, the northern extent of the Crypan Greenstone Belt. So it's a regional scale exploration opportunity for gold, which we think is a, a good commodity to, to be looking for right now um, in a jurisdiction in Botswana that is really a top tier. It's a top area for mining investment globally, not just in Africa. And um, with the... The, the group at Rockman, um, they're, they're people with whom we have long-standing um, professional and personal relationships. We know them, very smart group, um, and we like them. And, and so it had all the ingredients, we think, for a, a sort of regional scale reset for the company, looking at a commodity in gold that, that we think is quite topical right now. Great. Thank you very much for that overview. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, you know, that Rockman relationship and, and gold as a commodity as well in, in a few moments. But... I want to talk uh, about the Greenstone Belt. What's the significance of the Greenstone Belt when it comes to exploration work? Yeah, I mean, so the Greenstone Belts are, you know, in this case, it's an Archean Greenstone Belt. So it's, it's old and Archean rocks are, you know, 2.5 2 to 3 billion years old um, and, and found within um, uh, um, Archean uh, cratons. And in this case, it's in the Capval Craton. So in a Canadian context, that would be like the Superior Province or the Slave Province. And within those cratons, you will then find greenstone belts, which are basically just volcanic and sedimentary rocks that are the ideal localities to look for low gold mineralization. And the deposits, those types of gold deposits can be big. They can be multi-million ounces. Think of Red Lake in Ontario or Kirkland Lake, the Abitibi in Quebec, um, Yellowknife again in, in the Slave Province. They're the ideal location to look for multi-million ounce Archean low gold deposits. Great. And when it comes to exploring the Krypan Greenstone Gold Belt, obviously it spans uh, South Africa and Botswana. On the South African side, you know, they're producing mines, the Calgold mine, over 5 million ounces. Uh, on the Botswana side, you know, what's the exploration like there? Is there the same kind of established level of exploration and production, or is that side a little more underexplored? Yeah, very much more underexplored, uh, and it's you know there's good reason for that. It's it's it, while the rocks are the same and the belt carries on uh, for about 60 kilometers into Botswana, um, the bulk of that belt, about 80 percent of it, is covered by the sands of the Kalahari Desert, and uh, that's sort of a, a typical of the entirety of Botswana, which I think 70 percent of the country is covered by the Kalahari sands. And that's the opportunity. I mean, the world, I think often we'll hear people talk about the fact that the easy deposits have been found, those that are sticking out of the ground. The idea of looking in, in areas that are geologically perspective, but under cover, and in this case, shallow cover, are again, an ideal spot for a regional look. Um, there, there, and on the Botswana side, there has been past evaluation of, of the belt at a very high level, but not in any real depth, just enough to know that there's indications of gold mineralization but 80% of that region hasn't been looked at yet. And we think now we have the tools to be able to look under that sand cover. It's not crazy thick. It's only sort of 20 to 40 meters thick, reaches about 70 meters in some areas, but we're going to look in that sort of 20 to 40 meter thick band. 
um, and uh, and we think it's an, an excellent opportunity to, uh, to 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 look at a large area going back to first principles and and going through all of the stages to to identify uh, ideally a new gold deposit and then with the endowment that we see you mentioned Cal Gold at five million ounces plus uh, in terms of uh, the size of that mine that would be the target deposit that we're looking for on the Botswana side of the border. And when it comes to that sand coverage that you mentioned, how does that change the exploration program? It, it really just means you can't immediately see the rocks, but a lot of the tools that you use can be the same and it kind of gets back to going to first principles in terms of, of structural analysis. Geophysics will be a very useful tool in our initial evaluation. The mineralization at Cal Gold is in an, a, what they call a banded iron formation hosted gold deposit. Um, iron formations are magnetically quite unique rocks. You can you can see them in those sorts of data sets. Um, so we're going to be using uh, a, an unmanned aerial vehicle, a, so basically a drone system to fly um, really high detailed magnetic surveys over the sand cover. Use that information to help with um, with their interpretation of the existing geology that's known and extrapolating it under the cover, looking at structural settings trying to identify alteration, all those sort of initial stages, and then ultimately drilling down through the sand to sample the bedrock, and then ideally vector in on, on gold mineralization. Fantastic. I, I want to circle back a bit on that relationship with Rockman Resources. You know, you said you have a great working relationship with them. You've known them for several years. Can you tell us maybe uh, how did you come to them to option this project and, and how do the two companies complement each other in terms of advancing the project forward? Yeah, it's, I mean, actually the relationship goes back decades, let alone just a few years. And um, it's it just in, in sort of conversations with them, we knew that they had they'd identified this opportunity um, probably about two years ago that they were looking at ways to, to evaluate this belt. Um, and just with the, our own review then that we completed, as I mentioned, this summer, we, you know, we said, all right, this is really an opportunity. Maybe we should just take it on. And, um, and we think that we, you know, what we bring to, to Rockman, they, you know, they have strong in-country operational experience. They know operations in Botswana. They have uh, uh, access to the, the uh, remote mapper magnetic system, the drone system. Uh, they have in-country drilling experience and capabilities. And, uh, and we can bring the market side of things. We can bring the financing to do the work. We also have experience in regional scale evaluation of greenstone belts. We've done it here in Canada, particularly in the northern part of the Slave province in Nunavut. Um, so we, we feel that both teams are very much complementary of each other and, um, and that it's, a, it's an opportunity to, to work collabor collaboratively together now um, on, on uh, I would call it a rare opportunity, a, a regional scale belt um, there's, there's not many places in the world where you can do that. And, and this, this happens to be one. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like there's you know, a lot of exciting potential ahead for the company with, you know, this deal, uh, obviously do want to talk a bit about the financial restructuring, restructuring rather that's gone on. Uh, you know, you've done 10 to one rollback, 2 million, uh, life financing, uh, out now. Can you, can you tell us a bit more about, you know, the progress of the financing, uh, is it still open? Can people still uh, take a look and invest? Uh, and maybe why now is it, has been a good time to you know, undertake this restructuring? Yeah, I mean, don't take doing a restructuring lightly, but it is something that sometimes is a tool that you need to use when when uh, sort of pivoting a junior company like North Arrow. Um, we we last restructured and, and, and structured ourselves for the diamond work we did in 2013. Um, so we we're sitting about 175 million shares outstanding the board with the board, we made the decision to to do the one for ten rollback, which will leave us with seventeen and a half million shares. We are uh, we are raising two million dollars uh, using the life exemption, which allows for free trading stock on closing of the of the uh, of the financing. So that'll be ten million units at twenty cents, um, and so we'll be sitting at about twenty seven and a half million shares outstanding um, when when the financing does close, which we'll look. It's, we announced it on the third the deal on the third of September. Um, it does. It does remain open. We'll be looking to close it in the next couple of weeks. Um, the, the the timing is good for for some marketing activities. Just to explain, it is a change for North Arrow, so we need to, to let people know that that we we're, we're what the logic is behind this this transaction. Um, and and we think it's really just about setting up the company with under thirty million shares outstanding with the proper treasury to to advance this this project, and uh, and to be looking at, uh, at at the gold opportunity that we see in in the Crypan project. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and certainly, you know, a, a good time to be pivoting into gold. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about the status of, you know, your other Canadian projects, the diamonds and the lithium? Are they on pause now? Are you looking to, you know, bring in other partners? Give, it, give us an update there. Yeah, they, uh, they all those projects remain in the company. Our diamond portfolio is one that, uh, that yeah, we have spent a lot of time on. Um, importantly, tenure to those properties is secure. There's no pressure to spend money on them to maintain that tenure, for instance. So we think we can be patient with them, but we maintain our 60% interest in our now yet diamond project, which has this population of really high value, beautiful orange and yellow diamonds. We just need to wait for a diamond market to turn to, to really determine how best to move forward with that. Um, the lithium projects are a bit newer. Um, we uh, announced them and discovered them in 2023 when obviously the lithium market was very hot. There was a lot of interest in it in Canada. Um, we you know, frankly saw a lot of companies coming up into, into the Northwest Territories in Nunavut, which is an area we knew well and, and uh, acquiring projects that we knew were available by staking. And, and we did that. We've got those properties to the point where they're they're fully permitted, they're drill ready, there are spodumene pegmatites at surface that have never been drilled. Um, and our goal is to continue to look for a partner to come in and fund that that first stage of drilling on those projects. And again, tenure is secure, there's no pressure, um, but uh, if the right partner comes and the right deal terms, then we'll certainly look at that. Otherwise, we'll just be patient with those as we really turn our focus to, to evaluating the Project Pan project in Botswana. Great. Well, Ken, just to wrap up, uh, you know, for the CEO.ca audience and retail investors more generally, when they're looking at North Arab Minerals, what do you think makes you stand out? What makes it a, a unique company to take a look at? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, key part is the group. Um, we are experienced uh, exploration professionals. We've had success in discovering deposits, um, evaluating them, developing them, and, and seeing some of them turn into mines in Canada, also in Africa. Um, we have a strong shareholder registry. A number of our key shareholders will continue to support the, the company in the current financing with uh, insider ownership. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned that we'd um, last structured in 2013 and we had 175 million shares outstanding. Um, insiders still own over 18% of the company and have continued to support it. And we have a number of key shareholders who've continued to support the company as well. Um, so you know, we don't we, we don't take the decisions to, to change projects lightly, but at the same time, you know, exploration within our group, we've, we've done regional exploration. We've explored for gold before. We've had success there. We've explored for base metals and nickel before, lithium, diamonds. Um, we have the tools and the background and the experience to do it. And then in this case now, it's a chance to, to look at what's really, I think, an underappreciated jurisdiction globally in terms of exploration in Botswana, partnering with Rockman who have the experience to get the work done there. So it, it is kind of a unique opportunity right now. For, for investors. Well, Ken, looking forward to hearing more updates throughout the year. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks, James. I appreciate the chance to talk about it.